Uh, we have a little bit of light left and it's avalanche season. So maybe if we're lucky, you can see an avalanche or two. I don't know. They've been going off all weekend. We had, it might be a little windy up here and blowing in the microphone. Sorry, but that's the price you have to pay if we do happen to get an avalanche. The sun is going down now. It's only been up for a little bit. So there's not much left to melt and cause to fall. But you can see traces of avalanche up there. Hi, by the way. Torben yells at me for being late. Very much right. So that was an avalanche. Um, breathy today. That's an avalanche. Uh, you can see scrape marks there from snow falling down. There was a pretty big one there today, but you know, they're not that big. Good afternoon. So I started outside. This is about how much sun we have left. It'll still be dark by the end. But I thought maybe if we're lucky, those are all avalanches there too. But you can see where it's recently avalanched because yeah, they're tiny. It's just a little one. You'd only bury a car or two, that's about it. But you can see there, it's recently poured down. It's a bunch of new snow. Uh, there, you can see new snow and rock that has recently landed from somewhere up above. There as well. There. And this one was also last night. You can see all that snow fell down from up above, but if you look at that one, you can see there's a lot of rocks and mud in it. That one is just above the gas station, which is just on the other side of the building there. And it came from up there. This one has been a reoccurring mudslide, a uh, rock slide in those summers now. You can see where the new rock has been exposed. And of course, the water hasn't quite start coming out yet. It's still a little bit frozen. Let's see. Yeah, still frozen up there. No French people climbing it this year. <laughs> and then this way. We have Vikings in the village today, but they're all going out for beer now. Apparently Vikings observe St. Patrick's Day and can't stop drinking the next day either. So, <laughs> so they're mostly running around getting ready to go out. There's still a little bit of sun showing on those mountains there. Varsta, I was thinking, next, should we work on Varsta stitch today? Uh, I might be pronouncing that very Norwegian because Norwegian, uh, well, Sweden would be Varsta, Varsta. Uh, but in Norwegian Oslo dialect that I've learned, we have a tendency to make ST or LS to a SH. So we would say Varsta. So, but it's V-A-R-S-T-A. So, but I believe it's from Sweden. We'll have to read about it. I never do my homework. I just see if I can do this ditch. That's an avalanche. That one's been pouring off quite frequently. You can see the amount of snow that's built up over there. That one, if it's big enough, will go over the protective lip and then down into the fjord, if I don't make you too sick. Down that way is where the ferry docks. We had a really big one there last year anyway. Hey, Albert. Hoping for some avalanches, but it might be a little late in the day. That one was avalanching earlier today. It comes down from there, then it goes this way, and then it hits the wall like a spider and goes <laughs> And then it kind of comes down in different lakes here, and then it goes all the way down to the bottom. And then, of course, that's an avalanche. Vorsta. It could be Vorsta. If it's A with a circle over it, it's Vorsta. Uh, and then Sweden would say Vorsta. <laughs> um, X says, let's see, oops, I closed my window accidentally, sorry. Uh, it says, yeah, Vorsta sounds better. Fun fact, the same stitch was found on a fragment from Turku, Finland, dating back to the 14th and 15th century. That could very well be. I mean, it's, um, a lot of these stitches are just like one mistake away. And uh, you t like when every time when I try to teach Oslo stitch in a needle binding class, somebody goes and does York when they have a little time on their own and they come back and they're like, it doesn't look like it did before, but it seems to be working and like, yep. So someone will always switch it. Oh yes, don't forget to like and love and subscribe. Thank you, Audra. <laughs> and you can be one of the 20 people that appear every single week. It's kind of fun. Uh, this, is, uh, this is good therapy. We're at 157 weeks already. I'm kind of happy about that. 
And I like my little faithful following. We have, uh, Carl and I, we have about, what, I don't know, 20, 25 people that log in weekly, which is quite cool. It's like a little family of stitch and bitching and beer drinking, if your name is Torben. <laughs> Carl has only two beers left in his Christmas calendar that was supposed to be drank by uh, 2022 or 2023. So we've decided that this needs to continue in his uh, alcoholic journey. Uh, <laughs> Carl doesn't usually drink that. So we thought that he is going to send me to the grocery store with his car, card and I'm going to buy 24 new ones and fill up the boxes with 24 new beers. So Torben, if you have any suggestions for this, he says no more than two of the 24 may have mango in it. I think he's getting sick and tired of all the mango and fruity beers that came in that calendar. <laughs> Who would have thought though that they'd have so many fruity beers in there because one of the breweries that has, I think there's six different breweries that have beer in that thing. And one of them is Agar Brewery, and Agar Brewery is from Flom, which is about 20 minutes from here, uh, and prides itself in looking like a Viking stave church and a Viking design, etc. Uh, so they made fruity beers and put them in there. <laughs> All right, we're waiting, we're waiting. I don't see any damn... Oh, there's one. See it? Unfortunately, it's going down the bottom here. But you can still see it pouring. That's not water, that's snow. This is just a little one. But you could hear it crumble, I suppose. Yeah, Audra, if you want, we can add some to the thing. Add some to the calendar. He doesn't need to know. <laughs> so he'll just keep opening it because it's kind of fun having him open up a new beer every uh, Saturday and see what he gets. Or maybe two, I don't know. So there you go. We did get a nibble avalanche. All I had to do was threaten it. An avalanche. I can speak. Oh, you did hear it. Oh, good. Yeah, it's a big crumble. You usually hear it after it's broken, of course, because it takes a little while from the sound to travel all the way from up there to down here. Although that was most likely ice. So if we rewind and look back, there might have been more ice hanging up here and it just broke off and then hit the snow and then... Torben, I would twist my brain and come up with something from, hello, who's sitting on my computer? <laughs> I'm assuming that is an Albert or a Runa or a Louisa. Probably Albert, he wants to use that room tonight. <laughs> Albert, you can come out and join me if you want. Uh, it's Albert Hoare, right? Obviously not the Albert that's in chat. So we'll see if he comes up. It's me, it's... <laughs> I noticed that in the chat, um, when I type from my computer, which is obviously not me, but I get a little crown on my name, so that makes me a princess, right? I think so. Okay, I gotta catch up on chat and say hi. Uh, Torben was first, it's very important. Torben was first, people. You gotta get better at this, especially when I only post it with like 18 minutes to go and I had a lot of time today. No excuses. <laughs> Uh, two degrees where you are. I think it's about the same here. It's uh, not nearly as cold as it looks. No. Anyway. Um, pizza Bonanza in the making and after Diaper Demon and of Slanish is put to bed, cider. All right. So do you have any fruity beers we should stick in there for uh, Carl? I thought I heard something going around over here, but nope. And Garcia's here, Audra's here, Heidi is here, Nella. Um, there's Torben yelling at me for being late. <laughs> Karsten and Max, Kiwi and Matthias. Or no, Matthew, sorry, I made you Norwegian. <laughs> and uh, Albert. And Susan Youngman is in Frankfurt still, yay! And Peruto, wet and melting. Okay, I think for, uh, Susan wins for the heat of 17 degrees Celsius, at least until uh, Anna or somebody comes here from um, Arizona. Uh, Albert said he saw a couple of deer on his walk. I saw about four of them going across Hempstall Mountain when I was on my way home last week. Okay, so no, it's been, um, it's been super, super windy. When the wind comes through this valley, just right. So when it comes down over here, it gets really, really cold and it really shakes things up. Most of the time it just goes over. But when it comes through, we have big problems. So it came through this weekend and uh, blew everything and then of course it started out with heavy snow and then it ended up being heavy rain and that's why we had uh, red avalanche uh, warnings today this weekend 
but uh, I'm not a fairy princess. Oh, come on, Peruta. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's why we had a... Uh, that's why we had a, a perfect setting for avalanches, although there's always avalanches at this time of year. You can see, though, the snow has melted fast. A uh, little bit of watery over there, but that's about it. <laughs> Hector was confused at how a baby is related to Solanish. Only Torben could figure that out. Oh, and Garcia had 17 degrees in Holland today. Okay, so you guys are doing pretty well over there. It's Nurgle, not a Solanish. <laughs> Okay, well, anyway, I think we got a bit. Uh, so if the people haven't figured it out yet, uh, USA is one hour less away from us this week um, and next week um, than normal. So, for example, Matthew there, who's having 22 degrees in Minnesota, so he's just under freezing there as well. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> so for Matthew, is there's normally a seven-hour time difference from Minnesota to Norway. But uh, today it's six hours difference, and next week it'll be six hours difference, and then we'll change our clocks on Sunday. So we might be missing a few, but that's okay, it stays up. I think that might be all that we get today. By the way, anybody know a good wagon repairman? We, we need some help here. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna be carting much wool in that this year. Uh, fortunately, we have two of them. <laughs> Funny thing is, um, old broken things look really good in the village. It just kind of fits. <laughs> yeah, they only last so long though, because they're wood. Anne Moreau is here, hey? All right, where, how warm is it where you are, Anne? I, I didn't check, I gotta guess. We're probably about two degrees. So anyway, um, soon we'll be able to be out a little bit longer. I asked Carl if he wanted to join outside and do the first half outside, but uh, well, he's cold, <laughs> so, but he's been guiding all day outside. I've been sitting and warming up in the shop. So he's inside and I'll call him in later after I play with a little bit of needle binding. Peruta says when the clocks go forward or go guard in Norway, uh, it will be probably forward. It will be sunny for a whole hour. I think so. Yeah, that would, I think so. So we shall see. And then we can be outside all the time again. There's a little bit of rock falling over there can't see it, can only hear it, which means it probably fell a while ago. <laughs> it's just like one rock. Yeah, okay, well anyway, we can go in Belgium, Suzanne. It's quite warm, uh, but winter is coming again. Oh yeah, no, we just got hit for the second set. And I hear United States has been getting pounded hard this year. Uh, Duluth was a little bit worried about not making their, uh, only making 99.8 inches or something, but they've long since cleared that now. They've over 100. And actually, Drea, who uh, might be on later, she sends me a message and says that, um, check this out. So I see this picture from the Duluth News Tribune and Herald, and on the front page, which now you have to dig, the Miller Hill Mall, our one big shopping mall, uh, had the roof collapse uh, due to snow. I guess they had about 165,000, no, that sounds way too much. Maybe it was 16,500 tons of snow over the food court and it crashed. But we've had Boeing in there in 1983 and again in 2014, so the fact that it finally crashed isn't really a surprise. But happily, it happened before the, the mall was filled with people. So anyway, one last look and then we'll go inside. I see Maria's here. Just a few minutes to say hi, Maria. I have a printout I'm going to show today with poor coloring, but I got it up on the computer as well. Maria is coordinating, along with Tina Vesta and some others, a needle binding festival. Yay, the first one. I believe that's the first one ever, uh, but it'll be needle binding and knitting, so anybody with wool can uh, come. And also needle binding is very niche, so you need to bring other people in and then show them what the heck it is. Uh, are you not coordinating it? You have no choice. I'm making you a coordinator, Maria. <laughs> She'll be there showing her patterns. Nella's going to be there. Susan Youngman's going to be there. I'll be there. Ann Decker's going to be there. I'm dragging Carl with me. We'll do a YouTube there. It'll probably be, have to be... Uh, earlier in the day and we'll go for two hours because why not? I don't think I'll be able to keep uh, Carl around that many women for two hours, but we'll try. There are male needle binders too. Needle binders. I'm trying not to fall on my ass. <laughs> I'm wearing knitting today. I'm so sorry. I found uh, it was more moving uh, from Vespita Sloan, so I found Vespita Goodwangen and I found a shawl that I forgot I had. So I'm wearing it. <laughs> It's with Noro, so they have beautiful yarn. 
colors, but uh, I can't wear it in the village during opening hours because it's knit and it is not Viking. So then we'll go sit inside and kick Albert out of the office. Hi! I'm on YouTube. You want to say hi? Too loud. You have to. Your sister's on. Oh, you want to go this way? Okay, go this way. It's a Luisa and a Runa. <laughs> Luisa's Viking. I don't know what the hell happened to Runa. You're um, Viking from here up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I typed on your computer, by the way. Was it you? It's not Albert. It was you. I thought it was Albert because he wants to yeah, yeah. use that room and I told him he has to wait. <laughs> so you're the princess. And oh, then Albert doesn't look like a Viking anymore. Shame. Shame. <laughs> You were a Viking. Oh, I can hear myself. I have to turn off my volume. There. Okay. Okay, so I can show you what I did, and then we'll go grab Carl. We'll do get the needle binding stuff out of the way. There. Oop. So this is what I'm working on today, or this week. It's the same thing as the last week, uh, but this one is green. Uh, different green, shades of greens. I don't know if you can see it. There's, of course, the dark green trim, and then the uh, kind of an olive green, and then a really bright lime green. One thing I did differently, though, is I didn't have enough space for three rows in some of these, so this time I did it outwards in, and then I had this row in the middle going on top. And I will do that again on purpose, because it kind of gives it a 3D effect. I don't know if you can see it. So I'm going to do that anyway. But what this is, is disappearing um, facing. Uh, so I do have the right stuff this time. I came in the mail. Uh, you basically draw the pattern, you stick it on here. I thought you could iron it on, but nope. Um, but so I just stitched it down a little bit and then you, I cut it out just because I wasn't sure how much residue would be left. But a little bit of water. Don't look at the spit, that was gross. And it disappears. So you just soak it in water and this stuff just disappears. There, it just kind of goes away. <laughs> so there you go. I got more to work on. And then I can do some more show and tell. Ooh, there. I made this for the other Anders, not our blacksmith, but the other one. Last week he was freezing when we had filming in the village and the cold came down the mountain. So he is going to have a neck warmer, but I left the string attached to it because I want to see if he wants it a little bit longer. This is made with more of that reclaimed wool. Um, I did steam block it though because as you can see the wool that has been ripped out of something so the fancy name reclaimed wool means i just basically pur repurposed it from a sweater uh it's all kinky like this and so that's kind of okay in some cases but in some cases it's not you know it's always never always proper to be kinky <laughs> but it was it had a weird fit to it so i blocked it and now it looks like this anyway that's also stitch by the way so we'll see if it needs it longer or not. The idea was this is extra long, so he can fold it over if he wants to as well. And it's gray, so it looks like I did two gray things this month. I'm on a roll, if you don't know what the color of the month challenge thing is, um, because I have not been very good at posting on Instagram. But uh, you basically make something, um, anything, using the color gray. And it doesn't have to be completely gray. It can be a small thing, big thing. It can be painting. It could be... Knitting, it could be quilting, it could be whatever. It just has to use a little bit of gray. So that's the color of the month for March. Brown was January and February was blue. So as Max was saying, let's play with Varsta stitch. This one has worked flat. I didn't think I'd like it, but I actually kind of do. I didn't stretch it intentionally though. It looks a little Yorkish to me. Soak that wool in water, hang it and dry it out and the curls are gone, most of it. Yeah, that's another thing. You can reset the loop on this here too. If you like use a big uh, hespa tray, which is what a knitty knotty, uh, a knitty knotty and you wrap it around that while it's wet and then let it dry, it, this spin, this kink will go away. Uh, and then you can also whack it a couple of times while it's wet also and it'll reset the twist. Uh, but I kind of liked the way it looked in some hats when it was just done like this because it had like a bit of a more grainy look to it but I didn't like how grainy it was looking on this thing as far as it looked a little it made it look wavy when it wasn't so you can still kind of see on the edge what it sort of looked like up at the top there but anyway so I smoothed it out but sometimes I would keep it just the way it was I think it's the same wool I've been using this for a while so if you look on Instagram I do actually have a picture of a pair of wrist warmers that are done with this and I'm pretty sure I did not block those 
But otherwise, you just uh, take a wet cloth, put it on top, and then push the iron down, lift, push down, lift, push down, uh, through the wet cloth, and it's like brand new yarn. <laughs> but I do notice that as I pull the yarn through the work, it tends to get a little uh, knotted up. So, whoop, I just bumped the thing here. Okay, so this is the Varshta stitch. It looks a bit like York at this point, so I'm kind of curious as to how row two will look. And we can read a little bit about Varsta. Vorsta? Was it Vorsta? I have to look it up here. No, it says Varsta. Maybe that's just because they didn't have the key. We're going with uh, Neulach and Tatir's uh, definition. Uh, Varsta is one of the three stitches mentioned in the yearbook 2011 of the Swedish Sördemans Land Local History Society, and then there's a link to how to make it. Uh, this stitch is also one of the stitches mentioned in Hanna Martikainen's uh, master thesis from 2015. There you got the 14th to 15th century Turku Finland that Max was talking about, and the Hansen's notation. Uh, it really does resemble the Vendel stitch, except that the Varsta stitch, the third loop, is not split with a needle like the Vendel stitch. And then you can look more if you want to. But um, that's where I get all my bright ideas from when I don't know. We don't want to look at the crappy 80s furniture when I don't know what to do. But we need a little more needle binding and not just Carl. He'll be here soon. So let's try it with more of this pink yarn because I keep finding it. And of course we can make another pair of wrist warmers because they, the pink ones with the curl I had on, they're already sold. People want wrist warmers at this time of year. Okay, so for this one, you need to start out with, I think, four stitches. And you can start any way you want. So, I still have a cut on my finger. I don't know if you can hear the flute in the background. Runa made a flute today and Luis is testing it. So there's one loop. Now I have two loops. Three loops. And four. All right. Is that, no, it's Runa that's playing. I thought it was you, Luisa. Uh. Okay. And then you have to kind of take them off your thumb. This has worked flat. Maybe I only need three, but you have to do it in the reverse order. So this is the new one. That should be on top. And then the second one and the third one, so on. So you have one, two, and three. And this, this fourth loop, I'll just hold it behind. So you go under. Okay, yeah, so from your thumb, that's the first loop, second loop, third loop. So we're going to go under the second and third loop this way with this yarn outside and pull up. And that's it. That's all there is. And then I tightened it to my thumb because I'm, it seems to be working for me, but I'm kind of dependent on my thumb. Second and third loop and pull up. In a way, this feels like the button hole stitch. Obviously it's not, but let's see. Second and third and pull up. But yeah, I'm excited to see how the second row looks when this is attached. So it, it's worked flat, but because I'm catching it on my thumb, it does seem to be working for me to get a uniform size. Every time I work flat, which is basically not off your thumb, uh, I tend to get a wonky gauge where it goes kind of the fat and thin and fat and thin, but this one seems to be even. So my trick of catching it on my thumb and then taking it off seems to be doing the trick for me. You could also needle tension. There. Take it off, pick the second and third. So this is actually quite painless to do. It takes maybe a hair longer than others, simple ones, because you have to take it off your thumb. So who's tried this stitch before? No, I gotta say, I have not tried this stitch before. But I think I need to make a pair of wrist warmers out of it, depending on how thick it is after the second row. Hey, Carl! I'm going to go grab him, and I'm going to get him a beer. You have to see what's in week 23, and or no, day 23 and 24 of his Christmas calendar last year. There. It almost reminds me a little bit of Omani when picking it like this, but this is like the very light version of Omani. <laughs> Did 
Ta-da. So there we are. And this is a bone needle, by the way, from Runa. It's gotten nice and smooth. Okay. I will go and get a Carl. Hey, Carl, bring your glass. share some with Louisa and Runa suddenly hear about beer and decide they want to come too. Okay. I have to make room. Are you joining Carl? I made him wash his glass so we can put beer in it. Then we'll lift you up a little higher and Turn you. Ta da! Oh, good to see you. Yeah, I can't wait to see you in Denmark in um, May as well. That's what I was going to show. I got a second to show this, but we can see what you're drinking first. Okay, so you have this is Carl. Carl's not wearing a hat. It's so weird. You're like mm -hmm. naked now. <laughs> 23. Do you think it's got mango in it? Torben and Audra are gonna bring you some beer for your calendar. Yeah. Your new calendar, your uh... Remember, there is a limit. Only two of them can be <laughs> my, uh, can contain mango. Yeah, I'm gonna show that page a little bit better, uh, Maria. Didn't print out very well color-wise. Okay, Carl, you get to drink at Fardada Micro Brewery Yule oh. Special because Christmas special is good to have in March. I didn't bring anything to uncork it with. You have to use your, your scrama socks. You can show people how scramma socks can also be used as a bottle opener in the Viking Age. It just looks so generically I don't think Christmas. There is anything. Wait, is it bad if the tops is ill? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an F, but the way I was reading it looks like ill. No, oh, don't flick it too far away. I need to see this. What have you done to this bottle, woman? I might have shaken it up a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so it's supposed to be like this, F for fire dead. Are you stabbing me? I hope okay. not. But, but I thought it looked better like this. Ill. <laughs> Hopefully it's showing the right direction for you guys. Uh, Tor Torben says, uh, I have a beer here called uh, Fürstekaka. Fürstekaka is not a beer, that's a fail. <laughs> it's a cake. Coffee cake. Okay, so I have to bring this up on the screen because the colors on my printout show horrible more about this needle binding festival while we see what Carl thinks about that beer. Um, let's see. There we are. Okay, what do you think? Your Christmas beer. It's dark. I like the color of it. It's got a little, got a little reddish color to it. It's a lot more bitter than I expected, but it's not bad. It's probably because you were supposed to drink it before Christmas. <laughs> okay, while well, Carl enjoys his beer, I have to show you the screen. I tried to print this, but it didn't print out very well. Color-wise, you can see the difference in color quality. <laughs> anyway, this is what I was supposed to read last week, but I forgot to print it out. Let's see, turn the thing that way. Well, it's, it's the same thing twice, though. But Noel Bindings Festival, which means needle binding festival. Noel Binding, Heckling, Ostrik. But that's in Danish, so it's probably Heckling. Haggling. <laughs> anyway, but no other meaning. Uh, crochet and knitting. Um, come for a weekend of fun. Um, e garnets tine. Okay, come for a weekend in the yarns drawing. Uh, or, or, yeah, no, a sign of yarn, I guess. Uh, oh, oplev. I'm turning this the wrong way. Turn. There. Oh, oplev garn hundvark genum tiderna. From no beginning to streak. Um, come for a weekend in uh, the name of yarn and experience uh, yarn handwork through the times or through the ages from needle binding to knitting. It'll be on the 22nd or 27th to the 28th of May 2023 uh, from the hours of 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock. 4 p.m. is 16. Yarn um, alders be in Odense, Odense, which is in uh, the Iron Age village of Odense, Odense. 
That's how you spell Odense, Denmark. It's a city. Oplev, uh, oplev spännade, spännade. I can't speak Danish. Oplev spännade föredrag, workshops, funny viden och köp de. I'm reading it in Norwegian. I can't help it. Och köp de färdig läger gärna i utstyr. Is that better in Danish? Okay, I can say that. Oplev spännade föredrag, workshops, funny viden och köp gärn. Och jag köp de färdig läger gärna i utstyr. Uh, oplev spännade föredrag, workshops, funny viden. Och uh, köp det fa- fattig, what would that be? Uh, fattig läkert garn och utstyr. So experience uh, exciting lectures, uh, workshops, um, get a new um, knowledge. width, knowledge, yeah. You get a new grasp anyway on um, the concept of yarn anyway. And uh, you can get some new um, exciting yarn, uh, beautiful yarn and uh, things to work with it. So and the entry price for adults, vuxna, is uh, 80 kroner uh, on burn or barn. Is 35 kroner, so kids. So there you go. And they're working with Rayma too, so it's very important that we tell them that. <laughs> Let's see, where's page two? For uh, Nolabining to Strik. Let's see, Nolabining's festival are for all of my interest in Gunhorn Garnhold Berk of Bear Abiding. We will gana var me at Strik de Gamla Hundfarks Overlevel Set, or Vidre Giva Vidno Historian Omkring Detta. Andet garn relaterat är också välkommen. Uh, välkommen. Uh, Strikhäckling, jämmerfarvet garn, utspindning och så vidare. Och vi, vill se, vi ser gärna det hela representerat. Så so, Nolda Beanings Festival is for everybody with an interest in yarn handwork and um, construction uh, with it. Uh, we would love that uh, ska vi, se. vi vill gärna vara med till att strika det gamla handverks överlevelse. Okay, so we basically want to show you more about the old techniques and uh, and new techniques and things you can do with the history and with, and with the history about this. Um, and the other other yarn related is also welcome. Uh, so you'll even see macrame. So knitting, crochet, and even plant dyed yarn or home dyed yarn, wool spinning, etc. Uh, everything will be represented. Vil du vara med? Vi ska du ha en stand på festivalen och avhålla workshops, hålla föredrag eller något helt annat med garn som fokuspunkt. Vi gärna in hvis du har en god uh, so if you want to join, if you'd like to join, uh, you can have a stand at the festival or hold a workshop or a lecture or even something else that's yarn related with a focus point. You can also um, participate if you want to. And for more details, contact this email here. Uh, they spell A with null binding with A two days because it's the same as A with a circle over it when you don't have that letter. So null binding's festival at udenzodense.dequa. So there's a bit and there's a bunch more we can find out later. But... Carl's drinking beer, so. But we're gonna go, Carl. Do you think you're gonna handle that many women? Or do we need to get you some more beer? In insane amount of women. I don't yeah. know if I can handle that much needle binding. Can though. you handle that much textile women, though? No. I mean, you, when you leave, you might not have holes in your clothing anymore. <laughs> How do you like your beer? It's not bad. It's not bad? Let's see. There's no mango in it. There's no mango? You poor thing. No mango? Okay, so I gotta catch up on chat here. Kiwi says, these days I'm also working on my 2023 mood tracker blanket and I'm also stuck with a variation of the Osla stitch in various pink colors. It's a good kind of stuck though because it looks so nice when you're using that. Even if it's um, Osla or even a variant of it, it's a lot of work, but the texture is so nice. So, but the mood blanket, I really gotta, that's a, that's a year long project actually. So you basically like if this was a mood one, you'd have one color for every day represented the mood she's in and then you do a new mm-hmm. one row one or two rows or however the mood are you in when you're needle binding a lot, of, a lot of pink yeah so if you're in a crabby mood and you have to needle bind the crabby color but you feel more relaxed when you're needle binding do you change your color halfway through the day or how do you do that <laughs> i like that yeah i would be in a good mood if i was uh, doing craft um Max says the most typical connection when it comes to Vorsta or Vendel is the F1. I would believe so too. That's what I was planning on doing with this one. Unless it looks too thin, then I'd go F2. Uh, Pruda says the Iron Age village of Odense, Odense, uh, Sture Klaus, which means uh, big claws or great claws, uh, from needle binding uh, to STR, the needle tying festival for everyone. Oh, she's. Um, Type this straightly into uh, 
Google Translate, I can tell, because it's kind of doing some things. The survival of the old crafts and pass on the new craft, the knowledge and the history, understanding this and everything from yarn related is also welcome. Yeah, so Peruta texted as best she could. So you can see how it, uh, what it said when I read that way too fast in basically Norwegian. <laughs> Norwegian and Danish, I, watch me make him cry. Norwegian and Danish are quite similar. <laughs> you don't think so? Just like English and Dutch are quite similar. No, like English and Canadian and British English are, well, no, it's more than that. You're Canadians, you don't speak any English, so... No, the French Canadian. Mm -hmm. mm. No, all the Canadians speak English, but some of the... Not the, yeah, all the cubicle. I'm sorry, the what? The cubicle Canadians? They call themselves cubicle or something to that effect, the it's, people from um, Quebec. We say Quebec, they say Quebec. But yeah, they speak French first and English second, but and the even rest of not Canada... all Americans speak English. No, no, we got you a whole like, southern border that likes to speak Spanish. Yeah, and you have Luciano who likes to speak French. Yep, the French Creole. Mm. Mm. And then you have all the Native Americans who haven't gotten with the times and learned English yet. No, but yet you're still speaking Danish in Norway. No, we're not. <laughs> Granted, people in Eastern Norway kind of speak a form of Danish, but I don't. Okay, so I'm going to pick on you. You got a gambeson today. There's a nice picture of it in the thumbnail. Do you want to show it off or no? You can't give me both bear and tell me to be a... Run along. Woman. <laughs> Go get your toy. You can have your beer after. Carl got a gambeson. Albert was here today, and uh, Albert's been one year in the military. And then he comes back to do Viking, and um, suddenly he's too buff to um, fit into his gambeson. So luckily, Carl's not very buff and can fit into it. <laughs> No, but it looks perfect as soon as Albert had it on and said it was uh, was kind of too tight across the chest for him, etc. But it fits Carl perfectly because Carl's broad in the shoulders and uh, uh, more narrow, well, he's skinny, so. There, oh, there we go. Wait, wait, wait for it, wait for it. Ah, this is too hard. There we go. Ta-da. <laughs> wait, 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 do it again. We want to show how well it was. Okay, turn around, show us the ass. It's all about the ass. There is no ass, I keep telling you. That's just because you need to fill it. Okay, wiggle it. There is nothing to wiggle. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> okay, have a seat. That's handmade out of linen. You wanna see? This thing is amazing. Oh my God, it weighs a ton. So Carl's been freezing and uh, apparently not anymore. I don't know how well you can see it there. It is machine sewed, but it's uh, it's handmade, so they you can see almost the, still see the chalk lines in there, but it's linen and it's so nice. This reminds me of the uh, linen duvet that Outer made us, which by the way is really warm. Look, it's so nice. And even the leather is stitched on there too. So what do you think? Now you've owned it for what, about five hours now? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that's heavy, you get to take it back. You gotta better put it over there so you don't spill beer on it. I've already hung it in my closet three times, but every time you see a new person, you have to go have me go and get it and put it on again. That's my job. So, Vikings, Gambesons, do tell. We don't know. There are no evidence. No? Uh, a little bit of common sense mm -hmm. uh, indicates that I had... Rasputin, says if Torben not, Rasputin. Uh, if they didn't have exactly something like this, they had something that served the same function. Yeah? Because we know they used uh, chain mails. And a chainmail gives you perfect protection against cuts. You cannot cut through a chainmail. That's absolutely impossible. Yeah. But if you hit a chainmail with something like an axe, you'll transfer all the kinetic energy into the, into the chains of the chainmail, and then they'll continue into your bones, which would be bad. They tend to so break you when can, you do that. The collarbone, for instance, it mm -hmm. only takes... Uh, on the uh, something about the size of uh, a blade, it only takes, uh, I believe it is two kilograms of force is all it takes to break your collarbone. Ooh. And if you break somebody's collarbone or sternum or enough ribs, they are not fighting you anymore. Well, because you're dead. So you would like to have some kind of padding underneath your chainmail. And the combination of a gamberson hey. and a chainmail is... Uh, <laughs> What uh, you looking for? Very, very good. Have some beer. 
Do you want the rest of it? There's nothing in there. Sorry. <laughs> you, you filled it all. It's a you Louisa. Special? Uh, sorry, sorry. Christmas. It's a Christmas, uh, Christmas one. Christmas special, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a Louisa. Sorry, but if you're going to, you know, we're going to have to show sorry you properly. Sorry for interrupting. No, you're not interrupting. I think you can start <laughs> beer 24. Oh, it's still Christmas calendar. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're slow as hell over here. Oh, my goodness. But we're going to make him a new one. So you can have half of the uh, Rosa Sheen. Oh, this one we know that wow, Carl didn't that? like. This one, Carl's head. It's got to show what it is. <laughs> it means the red cheeks anyway. That's the raspberry wow. beer. Is this the one you didn't like that Albert Ras did like? If this is the raspberry, the other Albert. Run, holy yes. You, you get the whole thing. You get the whole thing. No mango, Why? but a lot of raspberry. Because he doesn't like that one. Because it's raspberry, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's the best live translation on YouTube. Uh, just come here and you get the uh, beer. <laughs> <laughs> Raspberry pink beer, that's yeah, it. Yeah, just be a guest and then you get the free beer. <laughs> pink cheeks. Mm. Oh, yeah, especially if you come at Christmas time. So you have to go and drink it now. You have to go get a glass. Wow. We have to see you to drink try? it. try? Okay, yeah, of course. That's the only way you can have it is yes. if you show us what it looks like. Okay. I'm uh, 18 plus. She is. <laughs> <laughs> In the United States, we'd want 21 plus, but you are oh. that too. Okay. <laughs> Okay, continue about the gambeson, sorry. Um, we have to get Louisa drunk. If we uh, look away from things like fire and the drowning and uh, other forms of exposure, in battle there are three types of damage that you commonly will be subjected to. You have the stab, the cut, and the impact. So, uh, uh, the spear, the knife, and the hammer, so to speak. The, um, the combination of the gamberson and the chainmail gives you perfect uh, protection against the hammer and the knife. The only thing that you s might still have to worry about is a very, very powerful thrust. So if I uh, annoy Greg for a whole day and he has a really, really sharp spare, I want to step aside. But aside from that, mm, pretty much any kind of damage. Any reason in particular about. you're throwing uh, her him under the bus, by the way? You want to slide over? You're gonna move over the gambeson and slide over a chair. We have to witness. <laughs> we have to witness you drink the beer. That's the only way you get the beer. Uh -huh. Aruna's having beer too. No, the Rosa Sheen, the one that uh, Torben says Rosa Sheen is a Bruce, a soda, and Albert, yeah. of course, says that one's kind of mm -hmm. good. So we have to witness you guys drink this and survive. You're a little tall for yeah, me. Yeah, we're too tall. They're way too tall in this part. <gasps> I have a strong suspicion that the Russian is going to like it, but not the Well, I actually... That's because she's a like, girl. Uh, I don't like... I like a tr normal, traditional beer. Yeah, well, this isn't normal or traditional. Uh, what <laughs> are you doing? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of head. Yeah. You give too much head. <laughs> what have you... Do you... How to drink it? <laughs> you can take this one. And you need I a need straw. a straw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There you go. Show off your mug, by the way. I like your mug. <laughs> and you also have a Viking glass. He has oh, good... it's his. Yeah. yeah, but that one's based off of a find, although the original is teeny tiny espresso size. Mm. Oh, I can do these. Oops, sorry if I see if I still have you in. A... There you go. See if they survive the raspberry beer that Albert likes and Torben says tastes like a soda. Uh, <laughs> I don't think... Very strange. I don't know if you got yeah. Runa's face in there. It's actually, no, it's very good. Because it still tastes like a normal beer, but the first uh, yeah. like sip, it's a little bit something. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not bad. Yeah. It's not like this fruit. Uh, no. It's not beer. as fruity as you thought. Yeah. I uh, told you so. The Russian was going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot say that they very like it, but it's still beer, and it's very surprising yeah. for uh, this type of like. Uh, Does beer. it make her cheeks pink like the picture? <laughs> I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it beer then, at all. <laughs> no, no, but it tastes like beer. No. Nori and uh, Russia are not agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> but you still drink it. Yeah. Louisa, what is your opinion on Oxoda beer, says Peruta? What is Oxoda beer? Oxoda beer, O-X-O-T-A. Can I see? Uh, it's on the screen, or maybe you can see it on here, if you're really close. There. Hello, 25 people. <laughs> <laughs> Peruta's living in Moscow. <laughs> Ahota! Oh, no, no. No, <laughs> no. Forbidden. It's, it's te the most terrible beer that you can ever try. Really? It needs more raspberry? It's very bad. No, it's just, it's like you drink vodka with yeah. beer. Oh, well, that yeah. sounds like it. No, it's just like... Sounds like a better idea than raspberry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's, the taste is just not beer taste, but it's just like alcohol. Very yeah. cheap, like, uh, oh. I don't know. How did you say that? Ahota? Ahota. 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 
<laughs> Torben says, Rosa Sheen is like drinking Christmas brews. What do you think, Christmas soda? No, Let's see if I can find you guys. It was, if it was sweeter. Before you had a clever, smart content, now you have a... <laughs> <laughs> ah, no, no, we did our needle binding, we did our Viking village. Bye! But either, either Torben has to... Whoa, wrong way. Either Torben has to... Oh, wrong way. There we go. Okay, I'll do this and look at the camera. There we go. You're trying as hard as you can not to Torben. get Luis off. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I have not had any beer. There, there. Yes, no, there. Damn it. Perfect. It's because I'm trying to operate this and look at the computer screen, yeah. which is delayed. There. I think I got you now. And what's she thinking about <laughs> it? Hector gang. Uh, I can what, see. What uh, are you thinking the about a hot beer? Is it good? No. Do you like it, Peruta? The vodka beer, apparently. Hot beer. It's not beer. I brought it. Too. Mm -hmm. wow. Heidi says, hey, Brudet. <laughs> <laughs> Heidi's uh, <laughs> his sister. Uh, Hector uh, is canning himself at uh, Karen's. Is canning himself at Karen's pronunciation. Oh, oh, hot -ah! Hot -ah! <laughs> <laughs> I've gone to the wrong part of the world. <laughs> it's huh? not bad. So I can't get you guys all in here at once. That would be optimal. Let's see. Uh, it, it doesn't. It doesn't taste bad, like beer at all. Do I, uh, I, do I, I look very uh, not mannered when I, I drink get from the no, everybody no, in here? Thank you. If no, either Carl has to sit with you or you have to sit with Carl. We can see the mess in the oh. girls' bath. All right. Yeah, it's better. You can sit next to Carl, no, too. No, it's okay. We're, we're not important. Uh, oh, but we are having an important conversation about gamuses, and, and Carl was talking about thrusts and spears. And yeah, uh, not, uh, we don't know for sure that the Vikings used a gamus or anything like that. They might just have used really thick clothing underneath uh, their chain mail because that's what the gamus is. Hmm. But we do know that the Normans used them. And the Normans are basically a second and third generation mm -hmm. Vikings, anywho. Yeah. So they probably got that idea from somewhere. Yeah. And I'm guessing not the French. You could sit over here, just slide the chair over. Nice. Oh, we got another 12 minutes. Um, Sorry, what did you do into the French? I just insulted them a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> not Again? A lot. <laughs> did Tiny I? Little is bit. it bad if I say that my um, Varsta stitch looks like a tapeworm? Mm. It does! It looks like a tapeworm. So but it, what is that? Yeah, well, I'm testing into another stitch. It's so, a worm in, in A tapeworm, yeah, the... worm that lives in your No, stomach. no, for How Hollywood loses thing? weight quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but for what is this? Oh, this was a test. Here's the other one. Oh, okay. But I stretched it out now, and it still looks the same. Um, but it looks like a tapeworm. At least it's not But a it's a cool tapeworm. Rhinoceros butt. No, it's not a rhinoceros's butthole. Oh. That was the... There you go. <laughs> Louise is trying on my hat. I don't think it's done. <laughs> no, but, uh, I do oh, we can do like this. There you go. Yeah, I think it will fit her. You think? Yeah, it's big enough. Yeah. Big enough? Well, you can have brain? that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it covers your brain completely. <laughs> <laughs> you are allowed to punch him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the yeah. size of my brain, people. Yeah. That's better than the bikini we usually call it, you know? <laughs> it's like a male swimsuit. <laughs> bikini. It's yeah. a play on words, Viking and bikini. Uh -huh. A Viking bikini is a bikini. Yeah, it was a funny in a period back in 2011. We had both Holger and Vermund competing in producing bikinis. Yeah. If Rune needs yep. Mollywood, what is Mollywood? Oh, yeah! yeah. Well, that's right, you guys were doing it with chain mail. Didn't Someone asked uh, if that's Rune needs Mollywood. Mammon might the Chen might be Kinnis and might the Seashell be Kinnis. Morel wood. Morel. Do you need morel wood, cherry wood, oh, yeah. to make needles? Oh, of yeah. course. Torben of course says. Okay, uh, give Torben a thumbs up. Yep, there you go. Morel wood would be good. Cherry wood. I'm sorry, I can't see if I got you in shot or not. There's a delay by the time I'm you saying hi too, yeah, but I don't know for who. Hector back. likes the ojota. Ojota. I'm with Hector. Hector is Peruda's other half. Oh. Mm. Uh, they're from South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. What else? Um, okay, so Carl, I'm going to put this back on you. We're going to make everybody seasick today, so if they're not drinking, <laughs> they probably feel like they have been. There we go. Oops. Up, up, up. There. There. Now, there was something, there was a reason you could buy the gambus in today, uh, because you forgot to buy something. You haven't, there's something else you need to purchase that you didn't have yet, which was the chain mail. You were concerned about something with the chain mail regarding the... Uh, 
Um, very strange. Big Gamberson. Yeah. Yeah. Very strange. No, I need a much bigger chainmail now because I need something that fits outside of the Gamberson. He's grown. And <laughs> so I have to go up to size, size uh, extra elephant or uh, <laughs> a small oh. dinosaur. Small dinosaur. But you haven't ordered a chainmail yet, so I that's okay. Yeah. But you will be warmer in the winter now wearing that thing. And then um, I told you, um, but can you fit Lamalor over it? And the look on his face mm, was something like that. What's there is Lamalor? nothing wrong with uh, Lamalor armor. Uh, Lamalor armor works fine. The problem is that a lot of people in this community thinks it's made out of leather. Yeah. That's... Yeah? It's so insanely wrong that I don't even know where to begin. Well, because Lamellar, with they they often showed us uh, patches like like roofing, like tile roofing, but with leather. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and this is based on uh, like a stave church. A little handful <laughs> of lamelles. That's the individual pieces that are found in Sweden. Yeah. But because not even the Swedish are dumb enough to make them out of leather, <laughs> you know, they are like actually made out of metal it. because that would actually work. Mm. Uh, leather armor would just make you uh, sweaty and exhausted when you get murdered by somebody who stabs right through it. Hmm. So, okay. And then, um, actually, by the way, uh, Torben said they had to cut five trees, oh, yeah. so they have plenty of... Uh, yeah, morales and all the fruit trees are very hardwood. Very it's good. a good wood. It just has yeah. to dry out for a while, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. But that's... How long do you dry out the wood before you make a needle or a hairpin out of it, Runa? Uh, half a year or something. It's so fun to make everyone sick trying to find you. There we are. I think I have you. Half a year? Half a year, yeah. And uh, because if you're a newbie like me, why don't you use... Uh, why do you have to dry out the wood before you carve something with it? With my uh, needle, it doesn't matter too much because when it's so small, it dries very quickly anyway. Yeah. But uh, if you... Then the, all the cracks has uh, happened. And then you have to, don't have to worry about cracks anymore. Mm. By the way, you made this one. This was the moose. Yeah. Part of it. This is the smaller one, though. But it starts to get the um, little coloring there. I don't know if you see it mm. on that one. But that's from the inside, right? The marrow yeah. side? Yeah. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Yeah. It's, I would think it's more porous there, but in this part it's not. It's just coloring has changed. Yeah. But you can see it gets a little bit more yellowish over mm. time just by using it. But to make a needle like that, actually, you don't have to dry so much. It dries while you're doing it, so it's yeah. So it's it, because it's so small. How is bone uh, versus um, wood when making needles? Uh, bone Art. is harder to carve than uh, sand. And then you have to wear a face mask or something when you're doing this. Yeah, you should. Um. But uh, it's more dense and it's stronger. Hmm. I do notice it can warp slightly if it's been in your hand for a long time, you know, like warmed up by your hand. Yeah, it, can, it can warp. I don't know if this one has been doing it yet. If it depends, if I, can, if I continually bind with one side towards me, mm. I notice that it might warp just a little bit curved or something, but I don't know. I have, to, I have made something today. Oh, let's, we need to see. <gasps> yeah, I know what you made. You have to test it and show it to us. Let's see if I can make everybody sick. Oh, if they are not seasick today. <laughs> Don't touch the joystick that I keep saying. And she did. Wait a Constantly. minute. Constantly. <laughs> Today you have not been touching it any other way. No innuendos, please. Okay. Let's see what you made. Uh, I'll turn it again this way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now you have to hold it there real still and then they can see the end. No, are you gonna, the end. Uh, yeah, are you carving a head there? No, I think. that doesn't matter. But it's this part. Thing. Okay. So show. Uh, wait, 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 wait for it. Wait for it. We need to have the intro. Okay. <laughs> Easy. And it's not done yet. You're gonna no. see so you sit down and out of range again. So we can't even applause you. Play some more. Oh, I'm showing. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't help You're it. gonna play too. You have to show it. You can play. You're gonna properly. sell those in the store too when they're all done. Yeah, that's the plan actually. Yeah. Okay. We have no idea what they're gonna cost yet. It depends. Good. 
And Morel was asking, what Crazy. is Morel? Well, that's cherry wood. But Morel, what's the difference between a Morel and a cherry? It is actually Morel in English, too. But Yeah, isn't it the same, more or less? I think it's, it's just a uh, darker cherry. It's very similar. It's like uh, uh, clementines and nectarines. Yeah. Uh, nectarines. Nectarines. Uh, I like nectarines. Mandarins and clementines. Uh, it's <laughs> like, uh, it's... <laughs> I don't really see a difference. My beam... Yeah, uh, the morel is a little bit sweeter than the cherry. Yeah, that might. I thought be. it was a slightly darker cherry too, but I don't know. I don't eat them, so. So people, if you want to buy this uh, yeah. amazing flutes, just uh, Runa's contact gonna contact uh, Runa. Yeah. He's gonna put it's, them in the store. Yeah. Yeah. So they can get them through. And the uh, everyone can play them. It's just a one uh, minute deal. Mm -hmm. Torma yeah. says he'll buy the CD, so you have to play more. Okay. <laughs> Too, they will you? be covered with, uh, with the birch no. bark or yeah. uh, celia bark. Do you so have they... the other one to show? The one that you modeled it after? So you can see what it looks like when it's wrapped? Oh, okay. Yeah. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I'm not, it's not just you I'm making run, Carl. <laughs> I'm making them run back and forth, too. Then you got to do like um, dual, dual flouting. Is that what you call it? <laughs> dual, a flautist or a, flute, a person who plays a flute is a flautist. Would you call it dual fluting or dual flouting? Flute, fluting. I don't know. I have plans. Okay. Uh, Audra says sold. They want to buy the uh, they want to buy the city. Uh, <laughs> Pedruda says, are you guys auditioning for Peru, uh, for Verdruna? Mm. <laughs> and then Carl, we got a question for you after. Okay. Yeah. All right, play together, you two. I need to do it. Oh, we can't they haven't even you. practiced. No, we, I don't really care. We don't. <laughs> I mean, they're not very a duo. Uh, you can see uh, but... Luisa's one is wrapped. No, it's just yeah, it's, uh, they don't normally play together with this. Uh, flute. Okay, so one of you has to play the um, moon harp, the jaw harp. Uh, it's not there. She's uh, oh, you organizing our work. <laughs> you, you need to be a manager. I'm trying to whore you guys for my YouTube. <laughs> play yeah. along. So this like uh, traditional uh, Norwegian flute silly like that, but uh, with a little bit, um, yeah. Magic inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's not the real Celia tree. No. No, it's but a little... Uh, classic but pipe. It's, it's a bit for durability. It yeah. sounds the same and uh, yeah. it's long-lasting mm -hmm. forever. This mm -hmm. doesn't rot. Yeah. It doesn't rot. Yeah, that's don't the problem with the Don't throw it in the nature ones. when you're done playing. Yeah. Recycle. Don't throw yeah. it at all. Play it forever yeah, and yeah. pass yeah. it down for generation <laughs> to generation. Yeah. Can we see yours though, Louisa, so you can see the wrapping? It's all Runa's flute. So. Okay, it's all Runa's, but you can see, I don't have if I have it in there, you can see the wrapping. That will be on it when he's done with it. But you're going to wrap yours with celia or bark? But we found out that uh, when I made this sounds actually better than the... Uh, yeah, the I think so too. professional one <laughs> okay we got just enough time for a minute so hang on so i don't make you sick again turning quickly to carl question for you this we're gonna have to zoom in for this one Whoop. <laughs> dump the gimbal thing here whenever the four play is this long the question is always stupid i know i love it you want to drink? uh could you carl explain why lamellar armor makes reenactors That's angry a good way to be drunk. Yeah, including you beer. well it makes me angry i don't think it makes the most reenactors angry because oh so many of them <laughs> i think there is this one polish guy i don't know which polish guy but i'm pretty sure it's a Austria. polish guy so now we're picking on poland Austria. uh who <laughs> came up with the idea Austria. of making a leather Austria. reproduction of the lamels <laughs> from the uh, from the oh, finding sweet yeah. mm. also kind of based on what we know the uh, byzantines were at the time and for metal this kind of makes sense the vikings are in touch with the byzantines if they have pieces of uh, lamels they would probably use it in a very similar way to the way the byzantines used it but they wouldn't use it they wouldn't make it out of belt leather because that's straight up inside and i have uh, in my time as a reenactor i've probably seen a couple of hundred leather reproductions and only two metal reproductions of this armor um i was just gonna say by the way uh 
Torben says, nectarines and mayonnaise. <laughs> Which I have to go back on. I have to say, mayonnaise. Holger's coming soon, by the way. Soon? Soon. Uh, no, actually, it's Andy's coming first at the end of April. Yeah. And, or oh. no, the end of March. And do you want to say hi? You're on YouTube. Yeah, she wants to. They're up on YouTube. Echo, Miss Narts is going to be opening a boutique and up. She's waiting for me to open the store so she can go shopping for things that she can make and sell in the village. Wow, what? Yeah. Awesome. What are you going to make? It's going to log a whole shed there. Arm bonded? Yeah, she's wow. going to make necklaces and arm and bracelets. Nice! Yeah. I'm your first um, customer. First to kind of play him, da. Lebra. That would have extra me a penny for him also. You have to charge her extra more. Uh, <laughs> because extra. you know she's a given. <laughs> Do I tell you who's going to start? I talked to my friends. No, no, no. I gave you beer. No, no, no. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, but anyway, we'll say bye because uh, it's 7 o'clock and I got to open the store for her, I promised. Bye! Uh, and then, <laughs> there you go. Bye. Okay, hey do. Hey do. Oxhota. <laughs> <laughs>